All right, folks, welcome. Another date, uh, another time. And of course, the place is the, uh, the hangout somewhere in downtown Lagos. Welcome, I'm Citizen Jones Hussein. Accentuate the positive, as they always say, but eliminate the negative. But today on the program, hear this, residents demand kickoff of the Mambila Hydropower Project. And later on, Zamfara Bandit's commanders tell farmers to return to farms as ceasefire takes effect. Let me report, I'm hanging out with a returning Babajide Kolade Utitoju. Uh, Jida, so greet you. Thank you so much. Uh, you, 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 you know, you look very well fed. Uh, you, you've gained some weight, but- No, I, it, I actually lost some weight, climbing the Mambila Mountains. Okay, <laughs> okay. Hmm? I lost some weight. All right, uh, all right. We, we'll find out. Uh, <laughs> but Wale is here, Wale Adeoye. I haven't seen you. Yeah. Wale said his name would, would, would come in this supplementary list. Hopefully. Okay, hopefully. <laughs> All right, the team is ready. I hope you are. All right, then. You know, the Mambila Power Station in Taraba State is debatably a little known, least talked about hydropower project in our country. The scheme, which dates back to the Shagari years of the Second Republic, remains one of Africa's biggest dam projects with an installed capacity of 3,050 megawatts of electricity. It got lamentably least talked about until the coming of the current administration. We recall that the construction of the project was approved by the Federal Executive Council in 2017 at a cost of then $5.79 billion and consists of a construction of four dams and about 700,000, well, 700, I should say, 700 kilometers of transmission lines. There appears to have been an inertia regarding the whole enterprise. And so residents are moody about this and are therefore asking for action and uh, to move the project forward. Babajide Kolade Utitoju visited the picturesque project site in Sedona local government area of Taraba State and brings us his findings. But let's share this with you. Please watch on. It has been more than 30 years of waiting for what could easily become the biggest power project in Nigeria to kick off. The Mambila Hydro Power Project is estimated to cost the nation 2.09 trillion naira. That is about 5.8 billion US dollars. Situated in the heart of Mambila, Nigeria's paragon of undefeated beauty in Sadana local government of Taraba State. Getting to the project site is a big challenge that tax one's body and soul. It begins with a six-hour trip from Jalingo, the Taraba State capital, to Kakara, the famous home of Highland Tea, and a 15-minute ride on multi-terrain vehicles to Amadou village. Even the best of multi-terrain vehicles cannot go beyond this point. I'm getting set to go to the site of the Mambila Hydropower Plant Project, uh, one of the three big waterfalls from which the water will be collected is not very far from this village. As you can see, it is not accessible by car. Our journey on motorbikes lasted one hour, 20 minutes on a rocky, treacherous, undulating landscape on footpaths already covered by overgrown weeds. As we moved closer to the Baru waterfall, it was clear that we had to complete the journey on foot. The villagers who were attracted to the project site by an unusual motorcycle convoy urged the federal government to quickly kick off the project. This is the Baru waterfall one of the three main water collection points for the Mambila Hydro Power Project that is capable of delivering 4,000 megawatts of electricity. This point is about 50 meters deep. And villagers here told me that this rock it used to be at that point, but the force of the water pushed the rock to where it is currently. The time has come for this project to be constructed. 
We are still waiting. Hopefully, it will happen soon. We have been hearing about to build this dam since, but we were not been born. And off to now, they are saying that they're going to build, they're going to build. Off to now, they didn't do anything, and we are pleading to government to see, to check on this thing and see and help us. I plead with the government to help us build the dam. It will give us livelihood. This dam has been like this for so long, after so many government promises. If this dam is constructed, it will go a long way to help the community. The caretaker chairman of Sadana local government wants the Buari administration to ensure the project kicks up without further delay. Uh, it is unfortunate to say that this issue of this Mambela Dam was pronounced over 40 years ago. But as you can see, nothing significantly has been done here or nothing has been done here in the, in the, in the, in the meantime. We've had people come in grading routes a couple of years back, but the routes now have completely been destroyed because they have not been using it. More so, uh, we want the federal government to intensify effort to see that this uh, uh, hydropower uh, project is uh, kick-started and in essence it is being constructed. This, from this com uh, uh, community, I know that it will give the people around here job to do. It will give the teeming youths who are roaming the street, perpetrating evil, something to do. Governor Dario Sishaku, who was involved in the design of the project, says he feels bad that the project has still not kicked off. All people in the, the North State alone, the whole country, and to start and finish takes a long process. And if we had started earlier, by now we will have maybe gone let's say halfway already. Time is also of essence. The earlier you do something, the better and the cheaper. Uh, it's rather unfortunate that we've lost uh, four years. Nothing has been done. You have been there. There is no road to the site. So will you build a place without road? Speaking on alternative sources of energy generation, Governor Ishaku, a former power minister, described hydropower as the best for Nigeria. The impact of Mambila is enormous to the country. Very, very, very important to the country, to the development. And um, hydropower is the best form of power. Hydropower is better than any other form of power. It's better than the gas fired. Because hydro is a cold process. And hydro, by its nature, lives for a long time before you start thinking of maintenance or repairs. It takes a long while. Should the federal government move to site and eventually complete the Mambila hydropower plants, it has the potential of boosting power supply and economic fortunes of Taraba State in particular and Nigeria in general. Given the erratic nature of electricity supply in the country, many Nigerians expect the government to treat the Mambila hydropower project with utmost urgency. Wonders of nature, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Judy, I saw you up there, and uh, now you've caught your breath, so we can begin to talk <laughs> from ground zero. Yes. Uh, you've been there, so... Uh, give us, uh, you know, paraphrase it for, for us. Yeah, you know, in 2017, I said on this program that nothing had been done about the Mambila power project. I said at that time that there was no road to the place. I said at that time that the Minister of Power then, uh, Baba Tunde Fashola, had to look down from an aircraft, look down at the site, from an aircraft because there was no road to the place. So you can't bring a minister to a place uh, that has no road. How does he get there? Mm. You know, and then security and other things, you must bear all of that in mind. So I said at that time that the, the minister used an army chopper to get to the site and simply look down. 
Many people didn't believe which, which, me. Which is different from being, being on ground zero. Yes, the way I did. Yeah. Many people didn't believe me. Some of them, they abused me. Oh, it's up to his antics again. You know that when you, the best way to be unpopular is to speak the truth. So I made up my mind that no matter how difficult it is to get to that site, that I will go there. So I chose these last two weeks when um, I decided to go to Yola and a few places in the north to go and see the site. For yourself? Yes. It was extremely painful to get to the site. Because even on bike, you, you could see clearly that you're, you are putting your life at risk. Because the valleys of Mambila are very deep. In some cases, up to three kilometers deep. And as you are riding through, on your right, you see the valley. On your left, you see it. I, I, so, I, wish, I wish you could have gone to, um, what do you call it now, Obudukati Ranch. There's a place called the Devil, Devil's Elbow. You know the elbow? Yes. You pass through the elbow and you are looking you hundreds see, of feet you down. You see the Mambila, the Mambila mountain stretch to Obudu, up to Obudu. Okay. Passing through the okay. Cameroons, yeah. Like yeah. right up to Obudu. So okay. it's the same mountain range. Okay. So what you see in Obudu is similar to what you have in, in Mambila, except that Mambila is colder okay. uh, than Obudu, and it is the highest point in our country. So. This is the so those things are the things that we see the the, the same dangers that you mm. talk about you know you see in a, in, a, in, a, in Mambila but if you can get to the top of Mambila then because the highest mountain in Nigeria is located there then you have you have literally conquered fear and on this right. on this trip because the, the, the of the nature of the terrain yeah. undulating nature you are climbing this uh, mountain. You descend, you climb again, you descend. After all of that, with the uh, motorcycle throwing you up and bringing you down, <laughs> then you discover that you have to complete the journey on foot. So the most difficult part is completing the journey on foot and then begin the ascent back to where you park okay. your motorcycle. That's it. Okay. And, and bring, bring, okay, this question of a route to the place, so uh, what shape will the route take? If you have to go that way, would, could there be a road constructed to the site? Yes, there could be because it is, um, if they could cons construct a road from Seti in Taraba State right up to Gembu, okay. Ibrahim Ibra Babangida constructed that road. And is, in fact, is a test of nerves for drivers because it's, it's very steep. And you will be ascending and for more than 1,200. More than anything else, you need a four wheel 1, driven. 1,200 meters. You, are, you, you are need climbing. a four wheel drive car. Yes. In fact, most people prefer to use the um, manual, uh, the okay, cars with transmission. Manual transmission. Yeah. Because those, are, those cars are the best for that terrain. And then you are climbing, you are also descending on gear one, just going down. Slowly. Otherwise, your brake, in no time, your brake <laughs> will, will be burnt because you are descending. You, you know, Wale, I'm sure Wale uh, is afraid of heights. <laughs> or are you not? Not really. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's an interesting thing that Baba Gide was able to visit, giving high witness account. It tells you how rich and diverse Nigeria is and uh, that we are, we are blessed with a lot of natural gifts from nation. Um, when he's talking, I'm, I just remember quickly tourism, you know, what that can, apart from the fact that, you know, it could also be good for agriculture, temperate mm. crops, yeah. mm. the fruits, you know, all these temperate crops, you know, tea. apples mm. and all that. These things you import from yeah. South Africa and yeah. all them countries. Yeah. 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 And in fact, yeah, wine, there. you know, uh, berries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because when you have a place that is about 1,850 meters above sea level, it means that you know there are crops that grow in Europe that are naturally, yeah. and I'm aware that in the past some people have made that attempts in Plateau and Taraba State with successful stories. So we have a lot of um, dreams that are buried in the cemetery, and I think uh, Mambila is one of them. Yeah. You know, apart from the Tama um, potentials, we also have uranium, you know, in that area. 
So I think it's one great opportunity that is uh, being allowed to, to, lie, to lay fallow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. G G we'll, we'll get to the nitty gritty, but 3,000, well, almost 4,000 megawatts can power the whole north. 3,000. Currently in Nigeria, what, what really are we doing? Um, last year, the highest that we were able to will was 5,222 megawatts, which we achieved we, uh, in, in February. And um, we've not been able to, to do up to 6,000 megawatts. We can generate up to 10,000. We have the capacity. Yeah. But we cannot will beyond 5,600 megawatts. Okay, megawatt. transmission is the major problem yes, here. Yes, we can't because the, the grid is old. They don't like it when we say, boy, it's the truth. The grid is old. You have to freshen up the grid so that the grid can take the load. That's it. Yes. We have, every time they tell us that we, can, we have the capacity to generate 10,000 megawatts, but nobody will tell you that we can transmit, that we can wheel 10,000 megawatts. It's which, not possible. Which is the crux of the matter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even on the day we were able to <coughs> do 5,222, it didn't last 24 hours. So this is the point. The, the, is, the, 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 the transmission lines couldn't take it. Yes, they are old. These are tra transmission lines are more than 40 years old. So this mm -hmm. is the thing. You have to continue your investment. I praise this government because they've invested a lot in transmission. You have to sustain that investment in the transmission uh, side of things so that as they are bringing in Siemens now to expand our generation capacity to uh, more than 20,000 20, megawatts, you know, which is still uh, about half of what South Africa does. <laughs> we must concurrently invest in freshening up the grid. If we do not do that, it's a waste of time. I've told someone that what is coming from, what we can get from Mambila, we can get up to 4,000 megawatts from Mambila. Okay. But uh, the, the, the official figure that they are looking at is 3,050. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Which is at any point, you are sure of that. Whether it is in the height of the rainy season or you are sure of 3,050. By, by, by the way, the waves I saw there yes. are not that heavy because the, the rains are here. The rains, we have not reached the peak of the rainy season in Taraba State. Okay. The, the volume of water will go up in the next few months. Oh, really? So yes. what we're seeing the, is small. The point, yes, mm. the point where I was standing, when we get to the peak, you know, rains don't begin to fall in the north as early as mm. they do here. The point where I was standing, and I did my piece to come, if it was in the, uh, the, at the peak of the rainy season, I would not have been able to stand there. I would you have been swept up. Yes. Ooh. Because that whole area would have been covered by the water. But the truth is, that is water wasting away. Citizen, when you remember what happened in Egypt, mm. where for lack of water, the government had to beg farmers to stop growing rice, that they should start growing um, wheat and other uh, crops that do not need so much water, yeah. which enabled Nigeria to become number one rice grower. Then you tell yourself, what is wrong with us as a country? That's water wasting away. That's water from did, did not, but, not, not what is wrong with us as a country as it is more. We are not, we are not using as, what we as have. You be, as human beings. What is wrong with us as a people yeah. who make up this country? Okay. Uh, that that I, for I me is better. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Because that's water wasting away. If the Israelis have this, this kind of water, they will turn it around. Ah, mm -hmm. Because they, they have, they, everyone knows Israel is good in agriculture, but they are not as blessed as we are. And they are in a, a, a they are a desert, desert country. Yes. Mm -hmm. you did, now, if we go into this thing proper, how many years would it take? A minimum of five years. Okay. I've heard some people say, "Oh, it could take eight years," but I think that a minimum of five years. You know, Con from concerted work. Yes. Mm -hmm. The civil works alone, civil 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 work yeah, alone yeah. would take. 70% of the work. Electrical is just about 30%. And that area, the area of the Mambila project uh, area, stretches through five local governments. 
Mm. The, uh, the That's man the, the belt. Yes. You have the water, you know, there are three dams, you know. It used to be 2,600 megawatt, but the current governor of um, Taraba State okay. was one of those who designed the plan. So he increased it to what we now have. So you have five local governments involved. Now, that area, that area is five times the size of Lagos State. So this is a big project. This project is bigger than the refinery project of Dangote in terms of scope, in terms of size, and not uh, in terms of the cost. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. When you and it will involve massive recycling of people, and in not less than one thousand five, uh, one hundred fifty thousand people. You wow. have to resettle. You have to build new towns. Okay. Where do you take the people to? So it's a massive project. It's a massive project. So, uh, is this why, why possibly why previous governments scorned uh, the project? No, there, there have been all kinds of de delays, litigation and the rest. But you see, when someone said, well, maybe Nigeria was, because as it is now, we are looking in the direction of China to help us fund this project. Yeah. But we must be ready to come up with our own counterpart funding. We don't do that. Hmm. The president was in China recently, and the Chinese president promised that they will assist us. But after that, after that trip, we stopped hearing anything about it. And I'm like, is this the same way we'll go on? I, 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 Wally, you are not overawed. You know, I, I'm, I'm also craning my neck to yeah. here get some more. But Wally, does it beat your imagination to consider that former President Obasanjo has a ranch on that plateau? Have you heard it? Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, it, it tells you um, so many stories, you know, because if you have a former president who has an investment in that area, mm. which is personal, then uh, you wonder, you know, if you can invest for things that bring personal profit for you, why can't you also invest in what brings, you know, um, goodwill mm. and something beyond profit? That's you it. know, for, for the, for the country it. as a whole. So yeah. it means that as, as, as a president, he recognizes the potentials of, you know, uh, Mambila, but for his own interest, you know. So I think um, the, the, the issue of one that has been raised, you know, the Chinese government are supposed to provide 85 percent, while the Nigerian government is supposed to uh, provide 15 percent. Yeah. And from what we have heard, this has been included, in, it was included in 2018 budget, and 2019 budget. So I think nothing should delay this project. It should just go on. Though people have raised the issue yeah, of litigation. Better you know, late than never. That, uh, you know, um, there's a company that has gone to court. It's even claiming that the case is now before the International Criminal Court in Paris. But as far as I'm concerned, that's not a major problem. Because, uh, you know, business must go on. There's no injunction as we speak that is saying that that project should not go on. Mm. So I don't think we should allow ourselves to be distracted. Wally, and, and we speak like, like a novice when it comes to things like this. Give Nigeria electricity at least 20 hours a day, yeah. and more than two thirds of our problems are solved. Yeah, yeah. Right, wrong? Right, because e e electricity, we gear up a lot of secondary um, you know, businesses. If you have electricity, it's going to affect the life of artisans, it's going to turn around the life of industries, banks, you know, people will create more jobs. You know, a lot of funds that goes go Goods and services. On, goods and services. You, you, and even, you make money and security. And, and because good. CCTV will be able to work effectively when there's exactly. light. So I think when we are talking about driving the industrial potential of Nigeria, everything is central on provision of electricity. Look at South Africa that we have just mentioned here. About 51,000 megawatts, a country of about 43 you know, and they, they, they have 20,000 stock stock yeah, somewhere yeah. in case. Yes, even Ghana, that mm. you know, is just you know the size of, of Lagos. We are almost you know sharing the same megawatts. You know, we are in the range of countries like Ghana, Ethiopia. Mm. So I think there's no justification for this. Um, you know, given the enormous wealth and resources at our disposal. Jide, now the people in the environment are asking for this project to. Mm. Uh, see the light of the day in their lifetime. Yes. Uh, you interacted with them. So what's yes. the general feeling there? Yeah, the people of the entire Ambila area, not just uh, Baru uh, or Gembu. Uh, that entire, Gembu is the headquarters of, of the of Mambila land. Okay. Um, and um, 
in Gembu, Gembu is not connected to national grid. That is the biggest shame. <laughs> Obasanjo has a hilltop house in Gembu. Atiku has a hilltop house in Gembu. <laughs> Bamanga Tukur has a hilltop house in Gembu. And I, have, I saw all of those houses. I have, oh, we'll go there. And then? I, I have a Victor yes. in Abuja, in Kaduna. Uh, Victor, good evening. Welcome. Uh, good evening. Yes, sir. Let's go. Yeah. Go on. Hello? Yeah, go on. Uh -huh. Good evening. Uh, first of all, uh, I commend uh, you people who uh, are doing a very good job. Thank you. Yeah. On, uh, on, uh, on, uh, we need to try to do what we did. Honestly speaking, uh, what I expect the federal government to do now, they should abandon this issue of being Ruga, Ruga or what is the country. They should invest on this power, power project. As you can see what the kind of job that Ruga told you to do and go and find out there. The whole minister went, he went on aircraft. The man risked his life and went there. But then he invest money, use uh, the Ruga money on that project so that we'll have better life. But because our president will just keep us that he uh, uh, was assure you, assure you, assure you. That's the English. <laughs> but then he invest some money. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Okay. Yeah, Let, let's uh -huh. go back to your hilltop. Yes. You know, yes. all the, these big people have. Yes, uh, it is, these are big people who have been, um, uh, who have played very massive role in the governance of our country. Over time. Over time. But, but please, 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 has... please, please, let's do this. Mm. Let's make some money. We'll go on a break and return. Okay. Okay. I'm interested in this topic. Please don't go. All right, folks, uh, we'll keep it going. GD, you were taking us to the hilltop mansions of our former big yes. people. Yes. Um, Bamanga Tukur, Obasanjo, Atiku, their houses are uh, the same area, close to one another. And Obasanjo, up till 2017, Obasanjo had about 300 cows in Gembu. On, on his farm there? Yeah, on, in, on, in his ranch in Gembu. Okay. And um, the person who was managing it did not do enough to uh, make, um, to probably double that number. Okay. So Obasan Job came to town and spoke, Hausa, um, they said, Shannon Gembu, Suna de Grima, Amabas were high for her. Meaning uh, the cows from Gembu, they are usually big. Yeah, but they don't procreate. So it, it was his way of saying that it's the same number. I saw the last time. Yes, and he had not been there for more than seven years. So at least in such a long time, you can't tell him that he's a cow. Uh, procreating. Yes, that is just the same number. So oh right there, he changed the man who was managing the farm. I've got uh, someone else to do it. So when you see the cows from Gembu, they are like these big, big bulls that you see in Florida and other places, very big, very, very big, mm. because the area is extremely fertile. I think that Taraba and Benue are the two most fertile states in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And Taraba has the added advantage of uh, being a state that can grow anything that they grow in Benue, whereas uh, the uh, Benue cannot grow everything that they can grow in Taraba, in Taraba because okay, okay. that's the only state where you can grow tea in Nigeria. Oh, really? Yes. That's where Highland tea, the farms oh, are, okay, are in, in, in a place called Kakara in the, in the Gembu area. So, uh, and when do you think of Kenya, Kenya's chief product is tea. Yes. Supplies yeah. the whole world. Yes. And if we have a ground that fertile, how about exploiting it? That is the thing. I, I, I spoke with the governor. I said, look, we need to take the tea growing to uh, greater heights because the tea from Mambila is, is, is world class. You see the difference. Don't compare it to the common imported tea that uh, mm. we drink. It's fantastic tea, you know, and we should be able to build on this. There's a lot of potential. Nothing stops President Buhari, for example, from saying, look, I want to have my Camp David in Mambila. Mm. Because the weather Climate. is a welcome one, yes. Mm. They don't use refrigerators in Mambila. 
There is no point. Even hotels don't use refrigerators because whatever you put down will become cold. Wow. And even mosquitoes are Without literally the powerless <laughs> because the weather <laughs> will just make them <laughs> redundant. So the weather is extremely cool. It's, it's fantastic all year round. Hmm. And if it's as cold as I, I met it this last time, you can only imagine what it will look like in December. All right, we, we have company from Kogi State. Adejo is the name. Uh, I greet you. Welcome. Good evening. How do you do? Fine, thank you. Let's go. Okay, I want to compliment the program for this episode this evening. Thank you. This is what we've actually been waiting for, investigative journalism. Mm -hmm. Gide, wonderful job. God bless you. You bring oh. out this thing so that the people in power should know what and what is lacking. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I just called you to compliment the crew. Good Thank job. You. Thank you. Thumbs up. Thank you, yeah. sir. Well, sometimes you're wondering, as he said, people in power. Are you, you are wondering if they are powerful people. Yeah. They, they... If, if you are in power, does this say you are powerful? Yeah, in, in a way you are, you are powerful because the constituent empowers you to do certain things. And uh, you also have the capacity. You know, you have the state institutions in your care. Uh, this Mambila story, for instance, you see our leaders that are building mansions there, having ranches. Mm -hmm. It means that they know what is good for them, mm -hmm. but they don't care about what is good for Nigerians. So when they come out openly to talk about defending the interests of the people, you also have to look at their, what they do personally, because that is what is mo uh, most important. If you know that Mambila is very good for ranching, why can't you? You know, encourage the state or even federal government build ranches, but all you have just done is to build those ranches for yourself. These are very opportunistic leaders that don't care about you know yourself and myself. All they are just after is what benefits their interest. And that's why when they talk today that you know they are your hero, you have to be very cautious that they are not saying it because they really love you. You know, they are merely opportunistic. You know, because uh, uh, you, all you, their you, life you, you wonder if they know the spelling of the word. Yeah, mm. you know, they are they are they are. They are, they are just opportunistic and just out to, you know, to gain the momentum of the, you know, the, 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 well, the, the, the momentum of to, the, the to great, just speak as if they are. The great thinker said, the, being a hero lasts 60 seconds. You yeah. do know a 60 second pronouncement can change everything. Yeah, it can. It can. Because if, you know, people have had, I'm sorry to go back to this because mm. President Obasanjo actually had a lot of opportunities. He was in power for three and a half years, then another opportunity to rule for eight years. So you know the country, you know, you know every part of the country, you know the problems. You know, and each time you empower people complain, you don't do it. Yeah. But when you are out of that power, then you want to be the Ganifa oh, and yeah. the hero. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, we have to look at what people do, not what they say. Okay. You know, what we have, what we have just heard about Mambila now tells you a lot about, you know, the character of Nigerian leadership. The blackout is the nightmare of many in Nigeria, no. and obviously there's a way out of it. Uh, there, there are ways out of this. Um, first, let me talk about Gembu. Gembu is not connected to the national grid. When you wake up in the night in Mambila, you see what is close to pitch darkness because it's not connected to, to national grid. The people who have generators are the ones who use light at night. Hmm. So how for so long we didn't think that we should connect Mambila to national grid, or maybe the terrain was the problem, so we didn't want to uh, confront that big problem. You, I you, wouldn't you, know. You, you know, you <coughs> raised a lot of electricity in people. We have a Muktao in Kano. He can't wait. Muktao, good evening. Welcome. Hello. Yeah, how Hello, do you do? Good evening, gentlemen. Yes, good sir. Uh, I, I really commend you, Mr. GD. Thank you, Mutari. Mr. GD, I really commend you for job well done. Thank you, Mutari. Uh, Zandazwa. Now go there, far. I also commend uh, the TBT for this wonderful job. Thank you. Mm. I'm more, more grateful to your elbow, Mr. GD. Amen. Thanks. But my mind keeps on telling me our political masters, are they trying to deceive us or not? Oh. We were told a lot of work has been begun in Mandula, and now the truth is coming out. I quote, His Excellency General Chaku said, we looked four years, nothing has been done. Is it a deceit or what? I cannot understand. And I believe no nation, no nation in this world could develop without power, without energy. 
our development really relies on electricity supply. Oh, yeah. Our industries want this to bring up, they'll create employment, they'll create jobs that will reduce social violence and crime. And mm. what are we doing? The money is there. And mm. why can't we invest for better tomorrow? Th thank you, Mutal. Th thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you so, know, it, uh, you can imagine if the electricity we yearn for comes. Yeah. In my view, we should look for alternative sources of electricity. You see, the problem with Obasanjo, Obasanjo will have solved the energy problem, the electricity problem, but he focused his attention too much on reviving Kanji. Whereas Kanji did not have the capacity to give us all that we, we, we so want. Kanji is about Kanji one, one is 700 thousand, megawatts seven, okay. installed Small. capacity. Okay. The biggest power plant, the biggest that we have, and it's the biggest in West Africa, is Egwin. And Egwin, e yeah. and Egwin, Egwin will do like 2,200. Okay. You know? So, but Obasanjo, when he now started, it was towards the end of his second term that he began building power plants. And those power plants were largely gas fired. Mm. Thermal mm. stations. Obasanjo also did not properly locate those power plants. A lot of them were too far away from, from the source gas supply. Of guy. Yeah, yeah, gas. And then look at the one, the one in Alauji. They discovered that they would need to build a bridge across the Imo River to get the turbines. To rule there. To get the turbine up to the site of the power plant. So we had all kinds of problems. All kinds of problems. Man-made. Yes. Now today, nothing stops us from looking in the direction of solar, wind, bio, bio, mm. bio uh, fuels, you know, mm. and other sources of uh, electricity. Co and coal, I think, no? yes, coal. Yeah. Where people will say coal because of uh, it pollutes the environment and all that. But the Chinese are still using coal. Yeah. South, South Africa, Africa relies you, slightly you know, on coal. coal yeah. But we have water, like Brazil. Brazil relies excessively on hydro. We have enough water to build more hydro plants. Look at a country like uh, Mozambique. Mm. They have hydro plants. They, they generate much more than they need. They export electricity to South Africa. That's Mozambique. So uh, that, let's look <laughs> at other sources of uh, electricity generation. Well, as you make to bury this, yeah. let, let me drop this. I hope it makes sense. Over 400 textile factories in this country shut down yeah. for lack of electricity. Yeah. Yes. Just say each, them, uh -huh, say each of them, see each of them employs 5,000 workers. So 5,000 times 400, if you have electricity, that, that is a lot. we'll be in business. If there's electricity, we are going to solve substantially the problem of unemployment. So you can't solve the problem of unemployment where you're just talking about theories. You have to mm -hmm. take practical steps. Mm -hmm. And one of those solutions is to provide electricity. In fact, people will generate jobs on their own. Oh, yeah. you know, and the oh, government yeah. will have less to do when we talk about creating jobs. That's it. That's it. You know. Okay, we leave it there, but then, as always, as is to provoke the debate, and then you elevate the debate and make up your minds. Okay, then, you know, there are no desperate situations, I must tell you, but only desperate people. The Zamfara banditry was gradually moving to take a permanent spot until the commanders of the desperate bandits agreed over the weekend to a cessation of brigandage, the comforting development took place at the palace of the Emir of Berini Magaji and had all concerned parties in attendance. The bandits' commanders included Ado Nashawari, Audu Karki, and Mohamed Bello. The state police commissioner, Usman Nagogo, chaired the all-important meeting with JTF leaders, vigilantes, and Mieti Allah cattle breeders in attendance. Is this a permanent Stratagem. Ah, let's just, you know, uh, at this place, what, what we've always wanted was for um, for us to have peace in the area. A friend complains every time we talk about killings in Zambia. So we should be talking about uh, governance, not killings. But <laughs> we can't watch people being killed. Because you don't want to discuss the killing of people and expect that we will not bring it up. Because if we don't bring it up, how do we get government to focus on that problem 
solve it and stop the, the, the uh, hemorrhaging of lives in Zamfara. So the new governor, Belo Motawale, had always been in the system. Someone uh, made a mistake on this program, imagining that the governor had never been part of the system. But he was a former commissioner. He was a commissioner for environment during the regime of uh, uh, Sani Yerima. OK. Yes. So, okay. and all of them, including Yari, the former governor, are products of Yerima. So Mutawale understands what the problems are. And now he's embraced the option of peace. Don't forget, it's not the first time that this, uh, the, the, that the effort to achieve peace uh, had been made in that state. But you find a situation in which the bandits will still return to, uh, to killing people. So I, I just want to appeal to the actors in the present peace arrangement in Zamfara to ensure that it works this time. During Governor Yari's time, we didn't achieve permanent peace, despite all the efforts and all the money that is spent. We've seen the same thing happen in Kasina, where the, where the governor came up with an amnesty program. But after a while, bandits began to kill people. So we can only hope that this peace is permanent. One thing is, is, is happening and is good. The two major contending groups, the bandits, who are largely Fulani, and the vigilantes, whose own duty is to protect the Hausa farmers, because they accuse the bandits mm -hmm. of killing farmers. That's it. That's yes. It. So what you are having is a situation in which the vigilantes abduct Fulani and keep. The bandits, too, abduct Hausa farmers and, uh, and their relations. Mm. But the two groups now are exchanging abductees. They are, mm. you, are, you release your own mm. uh, uh, abductees, I release mine. mine yeah. And as we speak now, more than 200, I think the, uh, close to 240 abductees have been released across both camps. And the markets that had long been, been abandoned yeah. because <clears throat> Uh, bandits will come on market day and kill people and, and loot livestock. Mm -hmm. They are now open. The same thing with, uh, with uh, farms. They are telling them, you can go to your farms now. Yeah. You know, we are not interested. I think even for the bandits, they are getting tired of killing people. I hope so. I, 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 I think I, that's I, I what is happening. I can only hope so. If we cannot achieve the victory over them militarily, Mm -hmm. Clearly, with no, then I uh, will support the idea of making peace with these fellows so that they stop killing our people. Mm -hmm. Wally, but the G JTF leader in Zamfara, Shai, what is certain Alaji Shaibu Aliyu, wants government to disarm the bandits. I I'm looking at this scenario. Well, I, I think um, perhaps it's one of the conditions of you know the negotiation you know uh, between the stakeholders. Killings have been going on in this part of the country for two years. For one thing, we used to call them bandits. Sometimes people say they are from outside the country. But what, what we have seen now, they are human beings. They have names. They have families. We know them. This also shows that grievances could be resolved. You know, they are not there to last forever. I think the demand being made by the vigilante leader should be considered. Because as long as people have arms in their possession, uh, arms are not meant for peace. They are meant for conflict, for killings. So the temptation to always use these arms will always be there. So we may not have the form and content of the negotiation that took place between the bandits, you know, among all the uh, stakeholders. Yeah. But I think mm -hmm. the summit should be a key point in you know, the discussion, mm -hmm. you know, that we are so talking the, about. The next phase yeah. of the... Yeah. Yeah. But the CP promise to and banditry in his, in his domain, mm. ambitious. But the commanders of these bandits are walking, are roaming free. I, I'm worried, I'm a little worried because, well, you, you talk about uh, uh, settlement and so on. When you settle a quarrel mm. at the table, have you settled the quarrel on the inside? 
honestly, what people just want to see is for these killings to end. Um, the route that you take to achieve that, uh, people are not interested in. Just solve the problem. Mm. This Brine Magaji is the hometown of the Middle Past Defense Minister. Mm. He couldn't stop the killings in his home state. Even in his hometown, he couldn't stop the killings. So now we have a situation in which uh, the new administration is trying its best to stop the killings and, and uh, disarm these, these bandits. And the bandits, the interesting right. thing is that they have not been paid. Right. It's not as if they are paying them. They are willingly uh, surrendering their arms. We have an good. august, even if important, caller now. Okay. Okay. That's the SSA media to the governor. Uh, Zeilani Baba is here. How do you do? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, well, what, what new thing can you tell us now? I can't hear you well. What new thing can you tell us? Okay, what can I tell you? In yeah. addition to what we already know. Yes, in addition to what you have already known. Uh, I don't know what you have known, but uh, actually His Excellency is uh, trying as much as possible to end this thing through peaceful uh, negotiations and truce with the bandits and the vigilante, what we call uh, uh, NSAKE here. So um, apart from what you have heard about uh, the release of victims, this, even today, this afternoon, the police commissioner uh, came along with additional people who are released by the bandits, and which makes the number now to about 250. All these 250 people released were released unconditionally by the bandits without payment of a single ransom for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this good. is just part of the initiative which the governor has uh, yeah, uh, put in place. And of course, within this period, you are aware that there have been no abductions and there were no killings to the exception of this unfortunate uh, uh, incident which led to the death of just, uh, uh, which led to the death of one person in uh, Jamari village in the southern Namoda. And of course, that is why we say the peace process will continue. Oh, and as it continues, so uh, by next week, probably we'll start, we'll start the issue of disarmament, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which uh, actually uh, will be the second lap of the truce. And yeah. after disarmament, it will be the resettlement issue that will come up. Zilani, we, we wish you Godspeed. Uh, we appreciate the palaba there and uh, hope the people can get back to their normal uh, daily life. Thank you, Zilani Baba from. Uh, Zamfara, thank you very kindly. Mm. So no ransom, which no. is the, the happy angle, the, the happiest angle to it all. Yes, um, it shows that there's a determination um, on the part of even the bandits mm. to make this, uh, this truth work. They too have been bombarded for so long, so it's like they, they are already tired of killing people, they are tired of war. What needs to be done is for everyone to be vigilant. Mm. The bandits must be vigilant so that they can identify amongst their ranks those who want to frustrate um, this, this deal. This yeah. deal. Mm. Because to go and kill people in Kaura oh, yeah. uh, is is just uh, unacceptable. Yes, this whole thing has come down in Zamfara. But we are still experiencing killings in Sokoto. Mm. The states contiguous to Zamfara have to be policed so that the bandits, N namely Kebi, uh, Sokoto, um, uh, Kasina, Sokoto, Kebi, Sokoto even, even, even uh, Kaduna. Kaduna, okay. You know? So, because people can move, the bandits can move freely into mm. those, those uh, states and continue the reign of terror. Because the frequency with which people get killed in Sokoto now, mm. I'm really worried. It, it wasn't like that before. Mm. Uh, you see? So if you are bombarding them in, 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 in uh, Zamfara, or they discover that they cannot operate freely in Zamfara anymore, they can easily move into Kasina or move into Sokoto. Mm. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> well, in mind, I, sometimes I cannot, I'm human. Yeah. I, I, I tend to be cynical. Mm. 
a bandit is a bandit. Yeah. I, I don't know in whatever language, a mm -hmm. bandit is a bandit. Mm -hmm. They have agreed to lay down arms. What next for them? First, we must not throw away justice. There must be justice for the society, All right. justice for the victims of crime, and also justice for perpetrators of crime. But quickly, the last call I'm told, Jide is here in Lagos. Hola, Jide. Good evening, Hola, Jide. Yeah, good evening. How do you do? Go on. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, first, I would like to commend uh, Baba Jide and Mr. Wali for a great job. Thank you. Okay. And so, in the, uh, about the issue in Zampara State, I think, I think a country, Nigeria, we shouldn't negotiate with terrorists. Okay. To make to to to, <laughs> to tamper with the issue of security, the uh, the issue of bandits, a banditry rather, we really need to we really need to work in hand, hand to hand with our government and the full support of our government to make things to eradicate every killing and every issues on ground. The issue of Mambila Mambila power plant, electricity control, electricity work. In uh... electricity controls everything, uh, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, Wally, so you begin to take it home for us. I, I pointedly am asking, you hear what, what yeah, the man yeah. just said? A bandit is a bandit is a bandit. Yes. So they have agreed to lay arms, but then as there's a lot of, you must admit there'll be a lot of apprehension <clears throat> amongst this, Populist. Now you may go back to your farms, to your marketplace, and, and all that. Well, I think they have been given perhaps the last chance. So if the bandits continue to flout the negotiation, the terms of the negotiation, the state has no other option than to use the sledge uh, to use the hammer. But I think we must also realize that the the negotiation is also a reflection of what is happening all over the country. We are being overwhelmed by crisis everywhere. So there's no, no way Nigeria can continue to say, okay, we want to fight in Delta, you want to fight in Bayesa, you want to fight in Bruno. So if the negotiation is possible in certain areas, we should not miss the opportunity. And I also think um, neighboring states, like he has mentioned, may adopt the, you know, the, the, the formula that has been used in Sanfara if the objective and subject conditions are the same. But we must be cautious. This formula that has been adopted in Safara may not work in other areas, especially in Bruno, where those people that are fighting there are raising the question of political power. Yeah. So, okay. we, you know, we, we're back with ideology, back with, mm -hmm. you know, passion. Mm -hmm. So we cannot uh, use the same system that we have used in Safara in, uh, in uh, Bruno State. I think that will just about be one, one last word, final word, yeah, 30 uh, seconds. Well, um, we need peace. We need peace. And... Um, if we can must negotiate with uh, those who are killing our people in this way, we have to. And I know that it's shameful. Mm. I find it really shameful that yeah. we cannot. We're, get we're the having job, to go this way. We can't get the job done. We are now negotiating, but uh, people people want peace and at, let, at, let whatever, our, at whatever at cost. At whatever cost. Yeah. So yeah. let our people have peace. Okay. Um, not the peace of the graveyard. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Gentlemen, we must pack, in, pack it in and, and go. Uh, and, but did, I just noticed today was day number 204 into the year, so we, we have 161 days to go. Yes. Crazy how the year runs. We we'll, we'll all end the year together. Oh, yeah. Wale Adewe, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. And uh, Jide Kolade Otitoji, many thanks. Thank you so much. Okay, then. So that will just about do it on the program and uh, on all, all of the other platforms we'll display on the, on the, on the screen for you. We are also on YouTube, and the address is at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. The feedback channel remains the same. I am Citizen Jones. Bye-bye for now.